Phil Ivey is known to be one of the greatest poker players of all time for many reasons. He has over $38 million in live tournament earnings, and he has been crushing the biggest cash games, both live and online, no limit hold'em, and all the other games for many, 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 many years. Everybody tell Phil their, his, their, their favorite Phil Ivy moment. Please don't. Let's <laughs> go around the table. <laughs> I'll start with me. I'll start with mine, so I'm out. <laughs> Today, he's battling against Andy Sachs, a regular in the highest stakes games on Hustler Casino Live. He came with like all this cash stuff on the table. You remember that? Yeah. And then you're, and then he like, it was like his second hand in. And then you like, you beat him in that pot and he's like, all right, I'll see you guys later. Spoiler alert, Andy makes the nuts. Andy makes the nuts, and Ivy with Ace King, top top. Let's see if Phil Ivy is going to be stuck paying off for a bunch of money. Today? Bike? Last week? Robbie, Besides. check your hand, please. Um, 2400. You're going back to Vegas back here? Tomorrow. Then I had to Seattle for the weekend. Oh, my kids are going. We are playing 100, 200, 400 with a $400 big blind ante and an $800 straddle. Big game. Full round to Robbie Lou in the big blind with two players yet to act. She opts to not play the Jack-5 offsuit. Not really sure why, but she does not play it this time. Next, Andy Sachs in the third blind with one player yet to act, opens it up with the king nine of spades, which is perfectly fine. This is a hand that you can certainly raise and then even call a re-raise. So you're happy putting in money with this hand. Over to Phil Ivey with the ace king off suit. He opts to re-raise to $9,000, which I think is also the best play. A lot of people make the mistake of just calling in this scenario, hoping to see if they flop an ace or a king before putting a lot of money in. But this is a situation where many hands that you dominate will call a re-raise, plus you're in position. This is a great spot for Phil Ivey. He re-raises, as he should. Andy, with his king nine of spades, also calls, as he should. He's dominated. He's out of position. Let's go to the flop. Andy here with a flush draw, and Phil Ivey here with ace-king. Flop comes 10, 6, 4 with two spades. Andy checks from out of position as he's going to do pretty much every time in this situation. We are playing very deep stacked, by the way. In this scenario, Ivy has $466,000. The pot's only 19,000. This is not a scenario where Andy should be leading often at all. As stacks get shallower and shallower, leading actually becomes a viable strategy, but not when you're very, very deep stacked. So question becomes, should Phil Ivy bet in this situation with his entire range, or should he check back with some hands? This is a situation where hands like Ace-King don't really mind checking back because if it checks down, you often win because you're gonna be against hands that you are dominating, like Ace-Queen, Ace-Jack, etc. They would also check down. That said, when we are really deep stacked, I don't think we mind just putting in a small bet with our entire range in this situation, especially if we expect our range to be in generally better shape than Andy's because in the scenario, notice Andy's gonna re-raise with hands like Aces, Kings, Queens, etc. Right? And since Phil Ivey has aces, kings, queens, tens, maybe sixes and fours, although he may call those pre-flop, but given Phil has a whole lot of really strong hands in this scenario, plus a whole lot of ace high flush draws, I think it's fine to bet with hands like ace, king offsuit just as a total bluff. That said, if you are going to check back a hand, ace, king, no draw is a reasonable hand to do it. So Phil does check it back. Let's see what develops on the turn. And it goes check, check, and Andy makes the nuts. And Ivy with ace, king, top, top. And Andy over bets here. Over bets the turn. Turn is the ace of spades. Giving Andy the nuts. And Phil Ivy, 0% equity. It's hard to know you have 0% equity with top pair, though. Andy decides to bet about 150% pot. He blasts it. This is a situation where I think it is actually pretty reasonable to blast it with exactly the nuts and exactly king of spades X. Because and when you take that strategy, either you have the nuts that you can very easily put a lot of money in with on the river, 
or you have a blocker to the nuts that can also improve some portion of the time. That's what Andy does over to Phil Ivey. You know what I want you to do? I want you to take a second and put yourself in Phil Ivey's shoes. What would you do? Would you fold or would you call and decide what to do on the river or would you actually bump it up to try to find out where you're staying right now? Pause the video and let me know what you would do in the comment section below. After it went check check on the flop, knowing that there's a good chance that Ivy might have hit an ace after this action, after checking back the flop. Three bet pot. Andy taking this large sizing. Ivy checking back the flop as the three better. Obviously, Ivy has no spade in his hand, but it's really interesting, the sizing here from Andy. This is a really, really, really rough spot for Phil because, like I said, Andy's going to have king high flush draw or king high flush or maybe queen high flush in this situation. So if that is his range, what should we do with our hand? Well, there's actually a pretty good amount of king x suited and perhaps queen x suited in Andy's range because a lot of those hands are the types of hands that would raise and then call a three bet. Also, there's actually not a whole lot of king x with a spade because you're really only looking at king queen and king jack, maybe king 10, which is blocked a little bit on the board, and maybe king nine offsuit, but that may not even call the re-raise preflop. So there's actually not all that many combinations of the king of spades x. So Phil's in a rough spot. I will say, when you are Phil Ivey, I bet most people, not necessarily saying this is the case for Andy, but I think most people will drastically under bluff you because Phil Ivey makes really, 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 really good reads. And if Phil Ivey can look at you and tell you're bluffing, well, that's not really where you want to be firing in $28,000. So look, I'm sure everyone's going to say that I'm results oriented to this spot, but I actually don't mind a fold from Phil Ivey in this scenario. Now, I will say, if your opponent expects you to be a little bit too weak, a little bit too passive, the type of player who's going to make folds that are a little bit too big, well then, you certainly don't want to fold. But if you're known to be a player who gets in there and battles hard, and you expect your opponents to be a little bit too cautious against you in general, when they blast it, it's probably because they have a good hand and they want to get money in the pot. So if you told me you wanted to call and see what develops, it's probably fine. But I think folding is also very, very reasonable in the scenario, especially as Andy gets more and more polarized to either the nuts or nothing, which I do think is the case. And even more so as he has less King X offsuit in his range that would raise and then call a three bet. Let's see what one of the greatest players of all time does. And what a fold there by Ivy. Checks back the flop and just folds to the overbet on the turn. And he is correct. He is correct. Andy with the nuts. That's something. Huh? A little something, something. Do you have anything? Yeah, that's something. You have something? <laughs> After some deliberation, Phil finds the fold. It's hard to fold top pair, top kicker. But somehow, Phil Ivy gets away, loses no money, and moves on to the next hand. That's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, do me a quick favor. Please click the like and subscribe buttons down below. Good luck. Have fun. When you make big hero folds, I hope you're right. And if you're not right, well, move on to the next hand too. I'll talk to you next time.